Today we're working on a 2009 uh, Mazda 3 with the 2.3 liter uh, four cylinder turbo. I uh, believe it's the Mazda Speed version. And a friend of mine brought it to me to have it looked at. His main concern is the coolant overflowing when under load. Obviously, the suspicion there is to check for possible head gasket issues. So, uh, when I received it, it was low on coolant. I topped it off, let it run in idle for a while, let the battery charge up because it had been sitting here at the shop for, for a little bit. So, just letting it run, let the coolant flow and cycle through, uh, let the heat build up, uh, which it did after... Uh, a good while of idling so uh, it seemed to idle okay and normal uh, it does smell a little on the rich side and I'm not sure if it has some sort of aftermarket tune on this um, it does have some other components on there uh, such as on the intake tube and external blow off valve stuff like that so I'm not sure if it's got a tune on there which makes it run real real rich especially at idle um, nonetheless that it's nothing to do right now with the mechanical issue if we have a mechanical head gasket issue so I took it out and down for a test drive around the block and I didn't get on it too heavy just a little bit quick accelerations and when I came to a stop sign on the uh, right side uh, out of the uh, hood or wheel area you could see some uh, steaming smoke coming out from underneath uh, which is where the reservoir is and the overflow I think dumps down into the uh, corner area there which you'll see some coolant some leftover residue so uh, it kind of confirmed with what he was telling me and then I brought it back into the shop and we actually did end up getting a trouble code for a lean mixture and other than that the uh, radiator hose which is actually kind of still crazy stiff uh, so a lot of pressure built up in it I was monitoring the temperature and it never really crept up too high the needle stayed at halfway point on the cluster, but uh, temperature on the scanner's data was floating around the 200 mark. I'm not sure what the operating range on these engines are, um, but it never seemed to get crazy, crazy high. Maybe 210, but then it seemed to bring itself back down. And like I said, the, the needle on the cluster never did go creeping up towards the high side on the temperature so pressure wise it seemed to have built up a lot of pressure in the system which would uh, kind of go hand in hand with the coming out of the overflow um, I'm trying to relieve some of that pressure slowly uh, like I said that there's still some built up in there and also that hose there is it's been replaced it's got some part numbers on that sticker so at one point or another that had either cracked or blew or leaked um, so I decided to pull out the camera and do a little bit of experimentation on this something I've not done yet uh, I've been curious on trying and uh, I want to see if I can set something up, basically a test to see if we can diagnose uh, visually uh, a blown head gasket with the scope and sort of confirm what's going on. Um, not sure if it's going to work. Curious to see and try. Uh, so I will do my best and give it a shot and bring you guys along to show you my uh, testing method and see if we can find anything. Okay, so I'm all set up. I've got my little contraption on the reservoir, and then I'm tapped into cylinder one uh, control coil. And the top one is the uh, transducer 
bottom one is the ignition coil. I'm going to do attempt to do a clear flood during cranking. Hopefully it doesn't cut out our ignition because that's our sink. And let's see if I can get you on on there as I crank it. I've got the gas pedal all the way down. Out. Let's go take a look. <laughs> I can definitely see something on there. Wow, ah, okay. Uh, definitely there's some uh, pressure changes on the uh, transducer there. So we'll go we know blue trace is number one top dead center pretty much close to top dead center so what we will do is use our rulers and mark off Our four cylinders. Um, this is cylinder one near top dead center. So it's one, three, four, two, one. So right at so one, three, four. When four is coming at top dead center, uh, and on the way this. Uh, pressure sensor transducer uh, works is increase in pressure the signal goes down low drops down so it was you know steady it was steady here and right at the coming up TDC on number four uh, the pressure starts to rise and it it uh It makes it come down, the signal come down. So there's definitely an increase in pressure in the coolant system when number four comes to top dead center. Um, and then there's a little bit also in this uh, range. So let's see, one, three, four, two. Um, right there, there's a little bit of an increase also. Uh, not sure if it's kind of a bounce back deal or or what, but I would say definitely some sort of a confirmation. And if you back out, you can see it all throughout consistently. So that's as if we were saying before. That's definitely a confirmed head gasket blown on cylinder four, and actually, and cylinder four has got a big, big, uh, bigger blown area on the gasket, and cylinder two, uh, as you can see, pressure also rises on cylinder two. So that in a smaller fashion, but still, pressure rises there so you've got two areas where the gasket has well we're assuming the head gasket um, has issues compared to the other cylinders where pressure is steady at top dead center um, yeah uh, definitely mechanical coolant uh, system issue it's being pressurized under uh, compression which would be confirm the 
uh, situation that's going on with the coolant system being pressurized. Now we know from where and most likely why and how. Um, yes, could be cracked sleeves or cylinder head, uh, any of that nature, but at least he knows he's going to know for sure with confirmation, visual confirmation that we grab from the scope by actual pressure readings in the coolant system. Um, one thing, like I said, this has all just been under cranking. I have not attempted to see what that looks like uh, running, so I guess we can go ahead and give that a shot. Um, I have no idea what that's going to look like, uh, but we'll go ahead and try to capture that. Uh, not sure if I will rev it up. Like I said, I'm not trying to suck up some coolant. Let me make sure the sensor's on, off, back on. And I won't do clear flood, but I'll actually start up and run it, see what it does. Do a little bit of a rev. Let's see. Don't even have to do a lot of rev. You can already see it dipping down, which is rising pressure, so let me. Hopefully I didn't suck up any coolant. But... Uh, Alright, let's uh, go back to page one. You see a big dip there during the uh, cranking. And just regular idle. Let's see what that looks like. It is a... Uh, do have some some waviness. Let's see. Uh, nothing too too standout-ish. There was looks like there was one here. Bigger dip than normal. Um, let's see what these look like. Yeah, I think at this point where it's running, probably accelerating RPM way too fast and pressure just keeps building up and you're unable to identify a specific cylinder I would say yeah there's really no way to identify that other than just when accelerating the pressure just builds up and stays built up um, yeah it's, it's too difficult while running to be able to pick out a specific cylinder, I would say. Let's see here, it gets a little... Yeah. I would say, I guess, the best way or, or method or testing uh, is to do it during cranking. It's definitely enough pressure at TDC on a compression stroke tube if there is a, a leak in the head gasket going into the coolant jacket that it'll stand out enough um, 
in an individual uh, cylinder column when graphing it to be able to pick out an actual cylinder. Other than this, while running you just see the pressure spike in the entire system. So there's your two uh, visualization methods and um, like I said never done it before first time messing around with it and uh, pretty cool to see and getting a 100% answer on it so hopefully that was cool enough for you guys too I know I enjoyed that it was pretty cool and hope to probably use that in the future with other same scenarios so uh, hopefully you enjoyed that and then uh, we'll just move on to the next one